Newton. We have some force being equal to this thing right here. And this in Germany is called the Hangabtriebskraft. Okay, it's a famous thing. Papa Fermi's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, are you here? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Wait, what is it? What the fuck are those? There's an L right here and, and we have a sketch. Is this supposed to be physics, Daddy? Yes, it is supposed to be some physics content here on this channel. Once a year, Santa Claus brings the physics content to you guys. Okay, and with Santa Claus, I mean me, Papa Flammy. Okay, we are going to do some analytical mechanics, like Lagrangian mechanics, just the finest of classical mechanics that you can actually find, okay, it's so nice. And the only two things you really need to know is about the Lagrangian and the Euler-Lagrange equations. Yes, I have them here. We are going to talk about everything nicely here in this video. And to celebrate this physics content, I actually created myself the harmonic approximator shirt. You can also find it in my shop, 10 to 15% of everything over the course of the whole December. Okay, check the shop out. It's really a nice deal, okay? It's, it's a steal, my boys and girls. Now, we are going to deal with the inclined plane and there are only two things I would like to add. Our angle phi is fixed, so mean our inclination doesn't change. So you can make it time dependent, but then you would end up with two constraints, meaning you would end up with some non-linear differential equation that is really not nice to solve, okay? And also, our mass simply slides down this inclined plane, meaning it's a point mass, it doesn't have any dimension, it doesn't roll, so we don't have to talk about things like torque and whatsoever and also yes it slides down frictionless now we are going to dive right in so what you basically do in Lagrangian mechanics is find out polar coordinates basically and we are going to deal with Euler uh, with Lagrange formalism of the second kind okay without any Lagrange multipliers etc now how can we actually start here? Well, what we would like to do is we would like to find out the coordinates of our mass m at each and every point of time. Meaning, I'm going to call this r. This thing actually has some x and y coordinates, this mass right here, and they are going to change over time. This vector right here is time dependent, okay? Because it can be here after three seconds and then after five seconds it could be here, okay? We don't know, meaning what we would like to do, we would like to find out some polar coordinates, meaning we have some coordinate system with x and y. And the cool thing is we have a fixed angle phi right here. And the only real thing that's going to change is this length, of our triangle, the hypotenuse, okay, over time. Meaning, what we can do, we can make a projection of x and y into here, that's going to be a right triangle. Meaning, we have the connection that the cosine is nothing other than x over our hypotenuse, meaning our x coordinate of our mass m all the time is going to be r times the cosine of phi. And the same spiel goes with our y, okay, it's r times the sine of phi, kind of. One thing you have to take into account is that basically our force is acting downwards. It goes in the downwards y direction, meaning it actually has a negative sign in here, okay? This is just some qualitative um, thinking right here. It's, it's just what, what happens physically, what is going to be right physically. Now, we can move on from here. Our kinetic energy, if I remember correctly from uh, third grade physics, okay, <laughs> is actually comprised of being m over 2 times the change of our length over time, meaning it's the velocity, but squared. And with velocity, I talk about this vector r right here being differentiated with respect to time. And if you then just do this right here, it's just like scalar multiplication and a lot of stuff is going to cancel out nicely. Meaning our t right here wants from us that we differentiate our r vector yet again. It does. Okay, differentiation is defined pointwise on our vectors, meaning we have to differentiate this thing right here. r is the only thing which is with respect to time, meaning this is going to give us r dot times the cosine of phi. And down here we are going to get negative r dot times the sine of phi. Meaning if we were to have um, r multiplied with itself, then you can basically interpret this as x comma y 
times x comma y and just like with complex numbers but different matrix multiplication we can do the spastic thing x squared plus y squared after that okay meaning if we want to have our t this is going to vary to m over 2 and then r uh, to the x coordinate squared is going to give us r dot squared cosine squared of phi and then minus and minus becomes positive so plus r dot squared sine of phi. And the really cool thing is with Lagrangian mechanics that a lot of stuff is always going to cancel out. All higher fundamental theorem of trigonometry, we can factor out the r dot squared and we have cosine squared plus sine squared is going to variate to 1. Meaning our kinetic energy overall is going to variate to m over 2 times r dot squared. Isn't that nice? And now we only have to deal with our potential. Our potential energy here is just a gravitational potential acting on our mass. Meaning it's defined by m times g times the height in the coordinate system. Okay. m times g times the height. And what is the height exactly? Well, this is basically simply always our um, y coordinate that we have right here. Okay. This is just what it is. This is always the height, this y coordinate in our coordinate system of our mass. So times r times the sine of phi. And with this, we have actually found out our Lagrangian, which is thus nothing other than t minus u, so m over 2, r dot squared, and then positive m times g times r times the sine of phi. And now we simply have to use our Euler Lagrange equations, meaning we are going to start with this side. At first, we would like to differentiate our Lagrangian partially with respect to the derivative of our constraint, time derivative of our constraint, meaning r dot in this case. Meaning we are going to end up with ddt of L differentiated with respect to r dot. This is independent of r dot, it's going to vanish. We are going to drag the two down, meaning we are actually going to end up with m times r dot. And if we were to differentiate this thing with respect to time, our mass stays constant, meaning we're simply going to end up with m times r double dot. And this thing is bound to be equal to our Lagrangian differentiated with respect to our constraint, which is nothing other than r. Meaning this thing is independent of r, it's just dependent on r dot, it's going to vanish. And differentiating this with respect to r, simple m times g times the sine of phi. Meaning overall, what we can do, this right here is our final equation of motion. We have some force being equal to this thing right here. And this in Germany is called Hangabtriebskraft. Okay, it's a famous thing you always find in your school stuff. Okay, what we can basically do is solve this equation of motion. We can cancel out the m on both sides. Okay, it's not equal to zero. We don't want that. Meaning our double dot is thus g times the sine of phi. Okay, this is, a, uh, this is an acceleration, this is also an acceleration, and oh, it's, it's already a good thing if we have the same units on both sides. Now, this thing is basically simply our dot differentiated with respect to t. So now if we integrate both sides with respect to t, we are going to end up with, well, this thing just ending up in our dot plus some algebraic constant c, we can bring it to the other side, being equal to g times the sine of phi and well this is just a constant we can bring to the outside integrating constant with respect to t is simply t okay plus some arbitrary constant okay if we take a look at the units we are going to end up with a velocity so we are going to call it the initial velocity v naught okay and now we can integrate this yet again by the same arguments leaving us with r with respect to t the solution to our differential equation a really nice thing is thus integrating the polynomial in t is going to give us g over 2 times the sine of phi t squared plus v naught times t plus some arbitrary constant which is simply some initial radius, some initial length of the mass being away from our origin. And this is it, we are done. This is our boy, the inclined plane. And this thing right here is the solution to our differential equation. And this is how it looks, it's, pr it's really beautiful, okay? I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, like, comment, channel, if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more, check out Papa Flemmy's shop. And don't forget to send those advent calendar videos to everyone you know. Up until the next video, have a flamble day. Ciao!
kannst du vorsehen. Selbst den Andi. Anton, guter Junge. 